Hey, Tana. Hi, Tracy. How are you today? I'm doing good. Thank you for um, jumping on this call with me. Not a problem at all. I'm looking forward to uh, helping you get started in your flooring journey and hopefully helping you pick the perfect floor. Yeah, I feel like this is going to be a really big help. You know I worked with 20 and Oak before in our previous house and they were wonderful to work with, but it's sometimes hard to make a decision on flooring. And so when they told me that they have someone now that you can speak with and talk to, um, I was very excited. So I went um, on the website and, oh, need, need you to know this, I bought a new house. We bought, we moved. Wonderful. Yeah, so that's why I'm here in the first place. So Great. we bought a new house. It's about 45 minutes outside of Nashville. And um, it's a new home, but it's builder's grade. And so it doesn't, it has carpet in the bedrooms and we have pets. We're not big fans of carpet. And um, the flooring that they put in is kind of a, a cheaper version. So we just wanted really nice flooring throughout. So um, I went on to 20 and 0 because I knew I wanted to work with them again. And I went to the product search feature and these were my top three choices. And um, so I wanted to just see if you could help me and we could talk about and kind of decide which one might be best for us. Definitely. Well, you did half the work, um, you know, by using that product search feature, you narrowed everything down so that, you know, if you know what you're looking for, that's the best way to start. Yes. Uh, from the from the choices that you have there, it looks like you're looking for something a little beachy, a lighter look. Yes. Uh, maybe that washed look. Yes. Super popular right now. Um and what's the overall style of your home? Are you going with like a modern farmhouse or are you going with something a little bit more classic contemporary? Well, it's funny because our home in Kentucky that we lived in three years ago, I was definitely farmhouse sort of moving into modern farmhouse. And then when we bought our house in Brentwood, we, um, I try, was trying to go a more modern style and, um, and it was fun. It was kind of like more mid-century modern. But we are on almost 10 acres here on this property, and I just don't feel like this house is going to fit with like a mid-century modern vibe. And so I do like the modern um, farmhouse look, but my main goal in this home is just simplicity. Okay. Simple and easy and clean, and I, I'm praying that I can have less clutter and less. I just want a simple, clean look in my home. Gotcha. And I, and I know with you saying that you're away from the city, maybe a little bit more comfortable, a yes. little bit more informal, a nice lived in, um, yes. you know, not a model home type, perfect high gloss floor. We yes. can definitely, yeah. um, you know, whittle it down from there. Yeah. Uh, how about pets or kids? Do you have Yeah. Any, so um, durability is huge for me um, because we have, two pets in the house. We have a cat and a dog, and then there's seven of us that, that are in and out of our house. So two of my boys live in other parts of the property, but five of us are in the main room and we are just, it's a revolving door. So we're constantly going in and out and we are on, on some land. And so, you know, we sometimes come in with 30 feet and I'm trying to get the kids not to do that. But so I want it to be kind of easy to clean, durable for pets and a lot of kind of wear and tear kind of thing. Great. So we're looking for low maintenance. I, I love that durability word. That's such yeah. a great word to use just because it's all encompassing with, you know, any possible thing that could come in contact with the floor, dirt, moisture, yeah. um, you know, pets in general. Um, okay. That's great. Well, let's go over the three that you, um, that you selected and we can talk about pros and cons of each of those. Is there one that you're leaning towards that, you know, maybe you're on the fence about or maybe yeah. one that's your favorite? Yeah, so as soon, yeah, as soon as I got them out of the box, and this is what I really love that y'all send samples of, because it just helps so much. Because right out of the gate, this one was like, no. Um, I, I, I liked the light look of it, but in person, I felt like it had a different a tone that's not going to go as well with my cabinets. It just didn't look as good, and it was, it was a smaller a smaller plank and mm -hmm. you know different people like different things i do prefer a wider plank so when i had these two beside each other i was like oh definitely this one and then these two were the two that i was trying to decide between okay um this one is the palmetto road monet and then this one is the veranda fine maple savannah fine maple right uh, both of these are really pretty but I will say this is the one that I'm kind of leaning toward 
Um, I love the wide plank and it's a little less grainy than this one. So I like the simplicity of this. I feel like that's a really clean look. Um, they both kind of have a, a matte kind of finish, but I, I just, I love the look and feel of this one. So this is the one I'm leaning toward, but if you could let me know as far as like durability or if one outperforms the other or one you think would work best for us, that would be awesome. So um, let's talk about the, um, the Savannah first. So okay. this collection is one of my personal favorites. Um, I really, really like the finish on these. Um, it's a very, almost like how you said it, you see less grain. It's a very mm -hmm. quiet wood. Um, it lets you kind of put the focus elsewhere whenever mm -hmm. it comes to design. Um, it's not a, it's not a scene stealer. It's not going to, um, you know, it, 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 it it's not going to command focus. So this product itself, um, is a, <clears throat> is a maple hardwood. Um, it's an engineered construction. And so that's probably the thing that I like to talk about most whenever it comes to hardwood is engineered versus solids. Uh, living in the Southeast, you know, the humidity yes. and uh, the heat is something that is uh, unlike no other. And that engineered construction gives you layers within the wood instead of one solid slab mm -hmm. of, um, of hardwood. All of those structural layers um, they help any, they help against movement. They help against, um, contracting and expanding and all of that stuff that's very detrimental to a wood floor once it's installed. Um, it was solid, you'll experience cupping or warping and you just don't see that with engineered mm -hmm. woods because of that structural integrity that the layers, um, provide. So that's the first thing that I want to start off with. That's a great choice just from a technical standpoint. Okay. Um, you mentioned you like the wider planks. That's a seven yes. and a half inch wide plank. Love it. Um, and that's a maple hardwood. So maple is, um, you know, there's a, there's a scale called a Jenka scale that determines, you know, the, the hardness of different woods. Maple ranks pretty high up there um, above oak, um, wow. definitely above birch. Okay. And really um, is only beat out by your cherries. Um, wow. So it's a very hard hardwood. So durable. Um, you'll see du durable. Very durable. <laughs> yeah. Very durable. You Good. can't say that, you know, there's people often ask, is there, you know, a hardwood that's scratch resistant? Well, right. any wood yeah. is going to scratch. Yeah. Um, as far as the, the likelihood of it scratching, very low when it comes to maple. Yeah. Um, that, um, Hardwood as well has a wire brush matte finish, like you mm. saw. Um, and so that, you know, even lends to the durability a little bit more. It's not fussy. It's very low maintenance. Um, you know, the care that it's going to take, uh, you know, you're not going to have to worry about waxing or polishing or maintaining any mm. kind of shine. Uh, so you'll definitely like meet that. your low maintenance requirement there. I like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the durability, um, you know, you'll find that in a couple of different places. Um, so one with this being a much less fussy wood, you'll see, you know, if, if you do end up getting a scratch or if you drop something on it, uh, it's actually going to almost lend to the character of the wood instead mm. of fight it. Um, so when you have that super formal look, uh, you know, a gouge or something like that is going to stand out massively. This is going to lend to that low stress, comfortable lived in look. Um, in addition to that, this uh, particular wood has a really cool story attached to it. Um, the entire Savannah line is modeled after bogwood. And I'm not sure if you're too familiar with that, but no. whenever, whenever logs are submerged in water, uh, minerals in the water will actually change the chemical composition of the wood and it will change the color all the way through. Mm. So if we look at like a typical hardwood, it would almost be like a radish. The outside is stained, all the colors on the outside, and then you have the core of your pre-finished hardwood. And then with this, um, this bog wood that they're, you know, trying to emulate, that can best be described with like uh, picturing a carrot where the color goes all the way through. Mm. Um, and it's just a naturally occurring process. So what they've actually figured out in the manufacturing process is a way to emulate nature's uh, process, which takes, you know, hundreds of years mm -hmm. and they can get it down to a very short period of time um, to actually manufacture the wood in the same sense. 
So when we go back to talking about any kind of, you know, minor damage, scratches or anything like that, you're not going to see um, a bright white maple wood underneath mm. the scratched finish. You're going to see that same color that you see on the top all the way through the top layer That's of your wood. Nice. That's really so good. It's a really cool way to go about, um, you know, manufacturing. It's an extra step. Um, and it's not actually taking bogwood, which is very rare and expensive. It's, mm -hmm. it's actually making it affordable and able for people to bring it into their home with that same, uh, that same concept, just using some technology. So that That's is really probably cool. the coolest thing about that wood. Okay. And, uh, the overall thickness of that particular one is half inch, um, which is great if you have tile in the house, mm -hmm. um, it'll come, you know, pretty close to even with the tile. And then also, you know, if you have some LVP or, um, you know, maybe some other, I'm not sure if you're, are you doing this all the way through the house? Or are you mostly, doing like, mostly through okay. uh, the, a couple bathrooms we may not. Overall, let me go over the, okay. um, the Monet. This is the Monet. It's um, also by Palmetto Road. Mm -hmm. So the Monet is a six and a half inch wide um, engineered plank. So we're still working with engineered woods. Okay. Um, this is an oak. So going back to that Jacob Hardwood scale that we talked about, oak yes. isn't shabby. We know that. But yes. It's just not going to be as hard as the maple. Right. Um, this particular wood has a 1.2 millimeter wear layer. So that very top layer is almost about half as thick as the wear layer on the Savannah. Um, going back to durability, you definitely want a thicker wear layer, um, yes. when you line that up with the amount of traffic that you have in the home. Yes. So, um, there's one, you know, point there for, for the Savannah, for yes. sure. Um, overall thickness of the Monet is going to be a three eighths inch thickness. Um, that's pretty standard for an engineered hardwood. It's just a little bit harder, you know, if you have tiled areas, there's going to be a much uh, bigger difference in, in height. Um, of course, the more layers you have, the more stability it offers. So a thicker engineered hardwood is going to provide a little bit more um, substance when it comes to, you know, a firm product that's not moving, it's not warping. Right. Um, so you have that kind of in the, in the benefit for the Savannah as well. Um, both are low gloss. Yes. Um, you know, we've talked about that. Um, and then of course, you know, just with Oak being a little bit more of a, um, it, it just has more character naturally. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you're going to see more, more knots, more grain, um, more movement overall. Right. Um, and it, that's probably, you know, another place where it falls short to the Savannah. Right. Um, but you know, just we, we went through your, your sim simplicity, durability, and low maintenance. <clears throat> it really, you know, it both would work in your home, but mm -hmm. I think the Savannah would be far superior, mm -hmm. you know, as far as your needs and then your design aesthetic as well. Uh, that may be the, the best one for you. Um, and of course, we can always get you in with a local dealer if you want to see bigger samples in store. I think so. Um, I, I know those samples are helpful, but it's very hard to get a, yes. a good picture of what the, the floor looks like without yeah. seeing a two-foot yeah. by three-foot sample. Well, this is, so I was definitely leaning toward the Savannah, and so you've kind of sold me on it. Great. Um, but I do still want to see a larger sample, maybe of both. I still do because I know that sometimes they can have, you know, different things in them and just seeing a bigger sample. Sure. but. I definitely love the water plank. I love that fogwood thing that you told me that the layers so that if it did ever get scratched that it it's the same throughout. Yeah, I'm kind of sold on this one. This is the one I was leaning to, so it makes me happy that you're kind of saying that it may be a better choice. But I do think if um if you could set me up a time maybe that we could that I could go to a retailer, I'd like to see them in bigger um bigger options and compare the, the price points and things like that um, before I make Definitely. my final decision. Absolutely. Yeah. So what I'll do, Tracy, is I'll, um, I'll pull up our nearest dealers to you just okay. using your zip code. And um, <clears throat> what I can actually do is call them and set up a time for you to go in. Okay. And, um, you know, just set up an appointment. They'll be ready for you. And um, then, you know, when it comes down to installation, do you mm -hmm. need them to come out and measure? Do you need them to give you a quote on 
any type of installation? I do not. Um, my husband actually does remodeling for a living. So Excellent. <laughs> I'm sure he would love to have an installer come in, but we're going to try to save a little money and try to do it ourselves. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome that you have somebody right there. Yeah. Uh, I feel very fortunate. Dream. Yeah. <clears throat> Since he does that for a living, I'm sure that he's got it all squared away, but you know that you can always, um, you know, ask us if you have any questions yeah. um, regarding installation and, um, we're always available to help yeah. with that if he needs a recommended adhesive or anything like that. Okay. So, um, we will keep that in mind. What I'll do is I'll get you connected with um, your closest dealer. Okay. And um, we'll set up a time for you to go in, check out the bigger samples before okay. you actually pull the trigger and decide that's what you want to go with. Okay. And then um, once you're there, they can help with um, ordering. And then, of course, you know, your husband will have your measurements. Yes. So um, they'll give you pricing. They'll give you a lead time. And they'll let you know how soon you can get started on those Yay, floors. That's awesome. I'm excited. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking the time no, no problem, no to meet with me. Um, this really helps. My husband knows I'm always, like, I'm always iffy when I go into the store and they ask if I need help and I'm always like, no, I'm good because I always hate, you know, doing it's high that. Pressure. It is. And then I end up walking out of the store going, Tracy, you should have let somebody help you. So it, it's definitely yeah. nice talking to you and kind of getting a feel for information about the floors before I even walk into the store. So that's really cool. Absolutely. And we love to get those samples in your hands too, because you yes. know, it just doesn't reflect the way you see it on the screen. Like you 100%. said, you saw that one in person, yeah. you immediately this one. one. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's and really good. Although I will say, I love the pictures on your websites and how they have them in the floor. And it definitely gives you an overall look of what you think, but it, it does help to see it in, in person, the samples. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. We, we try to kind of emphasize that because yes, as we as best we can represent it, it just doesn't translate like it does in your lighting and yes. with your furniture yes. against your cabinets and yes. all of that. All of so. that. Yep, I agree. Well, I all appreciate right. it. Thank you so much. Not a problem. And then will I just get an email from you about the time? I guess you'll just send me an email. I can email you or call you, whichever is easier okay. for you. Um, I'll probably send it in an email, and then that way you'll have address, phone number, Perfect. all the information that you'll need. Okay. And then you'll have all of my contact information as well, just awesome. in case you think of anything else. Please feel free to reach out, and uh, we're here to help. I will. Thank you. Thanks so much, right. Tracy. Bye.